Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here on Midday Kentucky. We've got David back at the table again. Woo, Man, we are having a great week. <laughs> Troy, we miss you, though. I know, yeah. I do miss Troy, but he'll be back on he Monday. Will. So yeah. we're, we're excited for that. I'm, I'm excited heading out the door this morning. It is so cold, yeah. but JC is saying we've got sunshine this afternoon. <sighs> Can't so wait. Nice. I need it. I need it. Oh, it's <laughs> it's my lifeblood. Well, before we get want to get going, we've been reminding you all week about our exciting day tomorrow. Midday Kentucky will be out live at the Kentucky Horse Park for the Bluegrass Rockin' Rodeo. But that's not all. We have ticket giveaways, of course. If you're the third and fourth caller to call the number on your screen, you will win two tickets to the Bluegrass Rockin' Rodeo. So you see the number right there, 859 566 3636. Call now for your chance to win those tickets. And of course, out there live tomorrow, Amber Freeman even joining us. She's a big horse gal, you know, our evening anchor. Uh -huh. yep. It's going to be a lot of fun. Are you oh. guys excited for the rodeo? I, I am. Yeah, I think it's great. Lisa's told me she was going to ride a uh, bull. And yeah, I'm yeah just, I, I, I heard she was going that to demo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come just out of my mouth. Sure <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm, we're going to have cowboy. Are we allowed to wear cowboy hats? That's what I, I need to can. know. You should. I've got my cowboy you can boots and ready. Should. I've got my boots ready. Uh -huh. I just want to wear the hat. You've got to wear a, a hat. I, I think mean, you should. I don't have a hat yet, but I want to wear a hat, so I've got to go get a hat, do a little shopping, <laughs> yeah. little shopping day. I think you know. should. I well, think should. don't miss tomorrow for David's fashion debut <laughs> at the rodeo, or as Troy would say, rodeo. 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 Yeah. He's if, fancier if than If I us. do wear the hat, can you guys call me Rodeo Dave? It would just rodeo be fun. Dave. Oh, Rodeo Dave. <laughs> you're so, you're so going to be called that tomorrow. I can't wait. Um, well, I wanted to get the show kicked off with a topic I saw uh, going around on Facebook, Twitter. Everyone is talking about this. Is a new study it came out from SunTrust. They're saying that seven in ten Americans would like to stop gift giving all around. Giving, receiving, oh. they want to just stop if their family and friends agree to it. Uh -huh. Now, most people say they're not doing this selfishly because they do say the best part is giving. And I think right. the older you get, that's what you enjoy the most, mm -hmm. giving to other people. But then. What this study is saying, the person that now you've given to feels obligated to return. And right, maybe right. they financially can't. And they're just saying because of the financial strain, people are wanting you to decide among family and friends, no one is exchanging gifts. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. We, <laughs> actually, we did this okay. as part of Doug's family. And the reason why was because... You know, we felt like, for us, that we wanted it to be about the kids, about our kids, about um, Doug's sister's mm -hmm. children, my niece and nephew. And so we're just, we just felt like it needed to be time to cut that back and just focus on the kids themselves. Yeah. And honestly, we love it. And I tried to do that with my family, but they didn't really want to do that. <laughs> So yeah. we're still doing the gift giving on my yeah. family's side, but on Doug's side, we did cut back, and it's just about the kids now. I like, we really don't exchange gifts. My family, we don't do that. Right. We, we, I, we are going on a trip, so a right. family trip over Christmas, we're doing that. But uh -huh. I remember when I was younger, when we would get together with big groups of aunts, uncles, cousins, everyone, mm -hmm. um, at Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. everyone would draw a name out of a hat. And that oh, was the yeah. person yeah. you gave a gift to, which is nice because who can afford to buy 20 gifts or 30 right. gifts? So then you end up buying, you know, maybe a little something that that is thoughtful, but maybe the person doesn't really want. Right. Where yeah. then each person got one gift that was pretty nice that you have from Thanksgiving to Christmas to think of. And I, thinking ahead, I'm like, oh, I'd like to do that if yeah. I had kids. It makes or, it easier. I don't know. What, how does your family handle it? And Th that is do you want to do, do away with it? That is what we do right there. We <laughs> uh -huh. do the same thing where we draw names. Oh, you do? And it, it makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think that, uh, so let, let's kind of pull the kids out of here. You know, I've, I'm in a relationship and bring that in. Like, could you do that with your partner? Because, you know, that can get kind of expensive. And I I think it would be great, you know, like, let's just do a trip or something, yeah. Randy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I do think that it's, uh, it's great to put it on the kids. I love that, Lisa, because yeah. it does kind of get to a point where you're like, okay, listen, you know, let's cut the expense right. of it. Yeah. Because it does, it gets, it adds up. It does. You know, so um, I would rather just, like, not do the gift giving, though, at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. Because I think you lose a lot of that purpose in these holidays yeah. mm -hmm. where it's like, it's stressful. I just want to have a good meal mm -hmm. with my family and do the family time. Yes. That's why I love I agree, and that's what this study was saying, that it said 90% of people would rather forego gifts for more time together, planning an event or something like that. Yeah. So I yes. thought that was good. I remember uh, a few years ago, um, we were exchanging gifts and my dad had given gifts to my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, everyone. And mm -hmm. my aunt was like, Jerry, what did you get the girls? 
and he just <laughs> said, a good life. <laughs> 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 but I think that is true. I think once you're, you know, an adult, <laughs> do you really, like, yeah. need gifts? But I actually um, don't, I would like to see this done away with, unless you've previously discussed it, because I think sometimes you receive gifts from people you weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, like, at work, I don't think you need to exchange gifts. I think cards and a little gesture is really yeah. nice. Yeah. But, um, Gestures I don't know. are great. You know, positive, sweet love, you got to push that. But when you start, you know, you're like, then people can feel left out. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You know, it's tough. And you don't want to leave people out. You know, and it's like you don't know what people are going through through these holidays anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's like you want to include everybody. And again, the expense it becomes a lot to take on between your family, your work family, mm -hmm. and just your friends. Well, I was right. wondering that about the expense, because this was talking about what you brought up, David, in romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. um, should you set up a budget ahead of time so that we one do. person doesn't go all out and then exactly. the other person did something small? Um, how, do, how do you handle that? We, we do that. You know, we're usually like, we're pretty like, okay, this is how much we're going to spend. And we keep okay. pretty reasonable. I mean, we do $100 usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, in the past, uh, I think we have done some other special things. But, you know, Brandy's birthday is on Monday. And you and I were talking about <laughs> yeah. that beforehand. And I'm kind of like, okay, it sometimes it gets a little crazy between Christmas and her birthday. Yeah. This girl likes nice things. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, so that's why she likes you. That's well, right. stop it. Aww. Stop it. <laughs> Good one. Uh, but, but what do you think, Doug? Like, with, uh, with Doug, what have, have you guys done? How do you handle gifts for each other you know, throughout we, your um, relationship? You know, we do focus more on the kids mm -hmm. um, now. But um, we do, I mean, he d you know, we'll make an agreement not to get each other a gift. Doesn't matter, Or does we'll put, but like, a anyway. $100, okay. you know, limit. Yeah. And then he'll buy me a ring oh. for Christmas. La remember last yeah, year? Yeah, gorgeous. And good, I'm like, good move, that Doug. was not good part move. of it. But the you guys deal. had also just hit, what, 20 years of marriage? We did, and so that's what that was for. Yeah, yeah. And, that's and it was. special. But yeah, he, he tends to push the limits on that, so I have to keep him in line. Because <laughs> I really, I mean, honestly, I really am totally fine if I didn't get a, a yeah. gift at all. Well, honestly. I think Doug is erring on the correct side here, because I think good I hear move. from a lot of girlfriends <laughs> that they'll decide not to get each other gifts. They get something from the man, and then yeah. the man didn't get them anything, <laughs> and then they're disappointed, yeah. and they the told them not to get anything. <laughs> right. So, um, men, if your lady says don't get them anything, She's just lying. still do something nice. Yes. Right. Just still do a nice card or just flowers. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to do a gift, but yeah. do you, just, I was thinking of you, maybe. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, well, David, we want to get over to your topic, and this really made me laugh. Um, you've got some funny tweets from men, right? This is great, because, you know, women are uh, kind of sick and tired of men trying to make pregnancy about them it's really big but uh <laughs> let's get one thing clear it's not the men having the babies the woman is definitely <laughs> having it but the men are taking it on and really like <laughs> taking on the struggles <laughs> and tweeting about it oh, oh this is so, okay. so funny so i just thought I, this was oh great gosh. um steve jones says stop it what are you eating like a horse this is after she took my the majority of my food hashtag pregnant wife nate bolt said when you lean to the pregnant wife and you say, I love you, and instantly she replies, chip and dip, you know she's pregnant. <laughs> Hashtag pregnant wife, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. Um, one of my favorites is uh, Thomas Rees says, nothing like wife dragging you out to a second supper at 9.30 p.m. at Applebee's. Hashtag pregnant wife problems. <laughs> And uh, one of our last one, Mitchell, or no, not the last one, but Mitchell says, being the only one in our house that's able to bend over is really taking a toll on me. Hashtag pregnant wife. <laughs> and this is kind of brave, but it's not Christmas yet, says, I, yeah, I know, I love the name. I've, I've now gone without sex for long enough to attain hero status. Hashtag pregnant wife problems. <laughs> so, you know, this has kind of been a, it's been a joke that these guys have been, you know, pushing out there. But, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of women have been like, yo, Put yourself in check because you don't, you are not uh, carrying around this baby for nine to ten months, yes. and your little problems, you better put it up, you know, because. You know, who wants to mess um, with a pregnant wife? I, mean, I think, I think what hilarious. made me laugh with this, and it's not the tweets, it was that the husbands thought that was funny to post. Yes, yes that's not funny. Yes. Yes. Don't do that. <laughs> it, it's like it's like here. I'm just gonna dig this hole. I'm just gonna keep getting there. I I thought it was um. It, these guys were crazy. Yeah. Okay, let's yeah. just put it out there. No, they really are. You're right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to lay it out there because I've been pregnant twice. Right. So let's talk about okay. this, okay? 
if Doug would have ever posted anything Ooh. like that, I mean, I, pans would have been flying through <laughs> the air at him. I mean, honestly, <laughs> do you, not complain when a woman Have you guys ever pregnant. heard the guy say, you know, we're pregnant now or uh, we're having a baby? And women are just like, hey, listen. And one of the quotes from this earlier was, you know, you're, you donated that seed and we appreciate it, but the rest of the work for the next nine months, <laughs> that's on me. Actually, I do kind of like when men say things like that because okay. I, I don't like them taking on that they're struggling through the pregnancy, but I do like right. when I hear them say, we're having a baby, you know, yes. we're pregnant, because yeah. then they're not saying, oh, yeah, my wife's having a baby, <laughs> she's pregnant. You know, they're taking... Yeah ownership of yeah. they're excited about their child, but I don't like them the pretending complaining. like they're struggling. <laughs> exactly. Well, I think that falls into the men who will also say, you know, like they're babysitting, but it's their own child. Oh, I, think, yeah. I, I like that when they say, I, we I are having say a baby. The yeah. second yeah. dinner for Applebee's, that was funny. Yeah, okay. you know that's, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's, 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 that's called a good life right there. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember when I was pregnant, um, Doug, actually, as I was gaining weight, Doug was also gaining weight <laughs> through the whole Team pregnancy. He, he cares about you. <laughs> yeah, he was <laughs> struggling was right there with hear the mirroring. It was so funny. <laughs> uh, well, Lisa, something else to give you a happy life. You have some tips for us to get a good night's sleep, right? Yes, yes. Well, you know, we all know that there are things that we shouldn't eat if we mm -hmm. want to get a good night's oh, sleep. Yeah. Yeah. But there's things that are out there, that foods that we can actually eat that will help us have a good night's oh. sleep. So I was looking at this and I thought it was really interesting and it, it came from National Geographic Food and um, they revealed that um, there's five foods that everyone should eat regularly if you want to put an end to insomnia because insomnia is a, a serious, serious oh, yeah. condition for a lot of people, millions of people mm -hmm. in the country. So um, these were foods that they listed and I thought this was interesting. The first one was Marmite. Now, have you ever heard of Marmite? I, I, I've i never heard of it. I think I had heard of it, yeah. you know, but I think I also confused it with Vegemite. You did, and <laughs> and guess what? It is it is kind of in the family with okay. Vegemite. It's Although, our Aussie mm -hmm. friend, yes. Mr. Troy, said that Vegemite is much better okay. than this, but... They're supposed to have it on butter with toast. Yes, but it's high in magnesium. <laughs> It's high in magnesium, <laughs> which can help us sleep better, um, and it actually helps calm huh. nerves and relaxes muscles, improving slumber and whatnot. So I thought that was interesting. Um, the second one was turkey. We've got big Thanksgiving coming up, good. so we've got turkey on the plate. Let's go ahead and eat it because we'll be able to get a good night's sleep afterwards. It. What um, is that, the tryptophan or something? Yes, yes. They, um, they said that the foods have uh, tryptophan in it. All of these foods have, hmm. have a high level of tryptophan, oh, okay. and it's an amino acid that helps in digestion of proteins. Oh, and so, okay. I always wondered the science behind yeah, that. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the logic behind this. But also, bananas are high in tryptophan mm -hmm. as well. Oh, and, I um, love bananas. <laughs> but yeah. the problem is I'm eating them in the morning, so maybe I should eat them at night. Well, you can. So you have that option. I was always worried about eating bananas at night because of the sugar. Sugar, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. You know, thought. so that's what I thought would keep me awake. But they're saying that it's high in magnesium, potassium, tryptophan, and vitamin D, or vitamin B. So they said, go ahead and gobble away. It's right? good for like, your muscles and yeah. all that jazz. All right. And the last one what is... What about banana flavored ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that's a yes. winner too. Yes. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Okay. I think we should do the ice cream before <laughs> bed. Um, but the last one is almonds. Oh, and yeah. um, almonds are very good. Again, tryptophan. Um, it's chuck full in these almonds. And it's going to help that. you be able to get a good night's sleep. And it aids in your digestion as well. So there we have it. All right. Well, stay with us. Coming up after the break, we have much more Midday Kentucky. I'm sitting down with the Retina Associates on the other side of this break.